Lemon here. We're going to do another tutorial today. We're going to do the triple core stagger fuse Clapton. SFC is usually what people abbreviate it at. The triple core stagger fuse Clapton is just like the stagger fuse Clapton, only you add one more space Clapton core. With this video, I'm going to show you how to do it without parallel Clapton. We're going to do a simple loop method with a weight. Um, and other than that, it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's a couple tricks with this build I'm going to show you. Um, once again, the Stagger Fuse Clapton is an original concept by Squid Dude. I'm not quite sure who did the first triple core, um, but since then people have got up to around 17 cores. The more cores you put on, the lower gauges you have to use for the cores. In this video, I'm going to use 27 gauge and 38 gauge. So, let's just dive down, start to do it, and we'll go from there. I'm going to show you the tools first, and then we'll get right on to the build. Okay, so here's the tools I'm going to be using to get this build done. The triple core stagger fuse Clapton. First, I'm going to need a drill, of course, and a swivel setup. I use croc swivels. Then we're going to need some close cutters and needle noses. We're going to need a tape measure or a ruler. That's optional. I like to have a macro lens for my phone so I could see anything close up if I need to. Or I could use some jeweler's glasses, jeweler's goggles. I'm going to need something to use as a weight, a heavy top cap off of an RDA works good. This is a battle cap, a comp life battle cap. It's very heavy, a very heavy cap. It weighs almost as much as some RDAs, almost as much as let's say a goon. I'm going to be using a drawstring clip, this is optional. I'm going to need something to wrap my coils around. I'm going to need an RDA to install in. A screwdriver to install. I'm going to need 27 and 36 gauge or any high gauge wire that you want to use and any low gauge wire you want to use. I recommend using somewhere between 28 and 26. And with the high gauge, I'm actually going to be using 38 and not 36. So let's swap that out. But I do recommend using 40 to 36. Or even 34 is good for a triple core. So anywhere between 40 to 34 would be a good one. I use a clamp on stagger builds to hold my drill down. It just seems to work a lot better when my drill's stable. And I need a safe mod to pulse my coils on when I'm finished to check the ohms and get all the hot spots out. Now before I leave this view, I'm going to make my loop and show you how I put the weight on it and get it ready to put onto my core. So I'm going to take my 38 gauge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out about 8 inches of wire. I'm going to give it a little stretch to make it straight. That's also going to thin the wire out a bit. Something to keep in mind. I'm going to get my battle cap, I'm going to take the 38 gauge, I'm going to stick it through the battle cap, and I'm going to tie a knot, and what I want to get here is about an inch and a half of wire on either side. 
inch and a half, inch and a half around that. You want to keep it a kind of short loop. You don't want it swinging around and such when you're using this loop because it may throw something off. Make that nice and tight. And there's your loop. Now you could use the loop just like this, but what I like to do, since I have these drawstring clips, I feel it makes it a lot better, is I take the loop and I pinch it. I take the drawstring clip and I put the loop through the clip, out the other side, bring the clip down. So this is how I want it set up and ready to be putting on my cores. The knot's inside, and this is ready to go. I can put that aside. Now what I want to do is I want to get my 27 gauge out. Now we're going to be doing a three core stagger fuse clapton. I want to get two coils out of this. Each coil is going to be about four inches. So I need eight inches on each core. Each of the three cores. So I need 8 times 3 is 24. I need 24 inches perfectly staggered. And perfectly staggered is a must with these. If you want to have a successful and non-frustrating build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my ruler. I'm going to pull it out to about 30 inches. Then I'm going to grab my 27 gauge, grab my needle noses, and pull the 27 gauge off the spool. And I'm going to bring it down to about 27 inches. I just want to give myself some wire to play with here. And I'm going to give the wire a little tug to make it straight. This is all nichrome I'm using. And I'm going to cut my wire at about 27 inches, give or take. So I have 3 inches to play with. Now what I need to do is get this attached to my swivel and to my drill. Okay, I'm going to grab my swivel. I'm going to grab my 27 gauge. Put it through the swivel and bend it over at about an inch. Then I'm going to grab with my needle noses and then I'm going to twist the swivel about five to ten times. And now it's attached to the swivel. Now let's get it into the drill. Now I'm at the drill chuck here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 27 gauge and I'm going to put a 90 degree bend into it. I'm going to open up my drill chuck a bit and I'm going to slide that 90 degree bend into the drill chuck making sure that it's coming out center from the center of the chuck. my drill and now I'm gonna pull my drill straight get it set up and get it clamped to my table which is optional but I will show you how I do that okay at this point the 27 gauge is in the drill so I'm gonna take the drill I'm pulling it tight away from the swivel and I'm gonna take that big clamp I showed and I'm going to clamp this drill to the table, just like that, while the wire is tight. And that should just hold it just enough 
for when I'm doing my business, it's not moving. Okay, now I'm going to get my 38 gauge. I'm going to get it off the spool. I'm going to take the end. I'm going to get my needle noses. And I'm going to wrap this end around the 27 gauge sticking out of my drill. I wish I would have gave myself a little bit more of that 27 gauge, but as long as it grabs, I'll be fine. I'm going to put my drill in the forward rotation. And I'm going to clap in about 15 rotations. Now I'm going to hold my spool on an angle and open up this clapton so it's spaced. Slowly, and I'm going to make about five spaces. And then I'm going to take my spool and I'm going to lock it and put that to, to the side for now. And now I'm going to grab my loop. So here's my loop setup I had with the 38 gauge. Now what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to loosen up my clamp from my drill. And I'm also going to loosen up my drill chuck. I'm going to grab with my messed up thumb this core. I'm going to take the loop and I'm going to drop it onto the core right behind that fusing wire. I'm going to get my drill and put it right back, making sure that that wire is definitely centered in the drill. Tighten down, pull the drill back and clamp it back down. I could grab my spool, bring it back to me. Okay, you see that layer of space there? What I want to do is I want to drop this loop right into the layer of space made. Now this next step is also optional. This clip is holding them wires tight together, but you can also bring it up and tight to the wire. This clip does exactly that, pulls the wires tight, but it also, if you push it up to the wire, kind of holds the core stable, and I feel I get a lot less mishaps, a lot less jumps when I have this clip on there and close to the, clamp, and close to the core. So I'm just going to go a little further away from the chuck so I'm not hitting it. I'm holding, I'm holding a slight angle towards the swivels, alright, so this would be a 90 degree angle, this would be an angle towards the drill, I'm holding an angle slightly to the swivels, this is 90, this is slightly to the swivels, it's also important that you don't hold the spool too tightly. Now that I'm a little further away from the chuck, I can bring my drawstring clip up. Once again, the clip's optional. You could do this with just the loop. But there's plenty of videos like that, so I wanted to show you something different. A lot of people like the button method, and this is kind of like the button method with a weight. I'm not a big fan of the button method, but this is a lot like it, if you really think about it. So I like to start off slow, and then when I get in the rhythm and I find that angle and I feel comfortable, I'm going to speed up. I'm about to hit my camera, so I'll get close up very soon.
sorry, but because of the weight, it's hard to get a close-up with the camera with this particular build, so I did my best. Now, this is a long wire. It's almost three feet long, and you always want to be centered with your build. So you don't want to start out here and be reaching down. You're not going to get good spacing. What you want to do when you get further down is just stop and adjust yourself. Get your chair and your body in front of it. Okay, I'm at the end here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my clip down, and I'm actually just going to cut my loop off. After one time going down this long of a core, it's pretty damaged and it's probably not going to be good for another one. So now I'm going to take my spool, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to put my drill in reverse. And I'm just going to hold this 38 gauge here. And what I'm doing is I'm just loosening up the clapton on the core just a little bit. I am going to feel if it's moving down here, and it's not yet. Almost like a decor. I want this clapped and moving on the core. It's moving slightly now, so I'm good. Now, I'm going to cut this 38 gauge. Okay, now before I go any further, it's very important to be careful with this wire. You don't want to pinch it and slide your fingers up and down. You do not want to move these spaces. You just did all that work to get perfect spacing. You want to leave it that way. So really try to handle this wire in the middle as least amount possible. You need this spacing to be perfect and you need it to be able to move as you clap in or as you fuse all three together. So now what I'm going to do, now that the clapton's loose, is I'm going to clip it off of the swivel carefully and clip it off of the, and take it out of the drill carefully and just drop it down on the table. Okay, so here's my spaced wire. I'm actually going to give you a close-up of it once I get the three cores cut. So what I want to do is I want to check how much clean spaced wire I have here. Because I need three cores, so I'm basically going to get a measurement and divide that by three and see where my cuts are going to go. So it looks like I ended up with about... 24 inches, just like I planned. A little less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these all. Well, not all. I'm going to cut the first one from clean wire to clean wire at seven and a half. I really don't want to handle this wire, so I'm just going to try to handle it as least as possible. So I cut that one at seven and a half and then I'm going to bring my roller down and I'm going to cut this at seven and a half. Now I never flip these wires. They're all sitting where they were. And then this one, I'm actually going to leave the end on. This is going to be my middle wire. So now I'm going to take this wire and put it on the left of the middle wire. And I'm going to take this wire, and I never flipped them. 
and I'm going to put it on the right of the middle one. Now let me just show you a close up of what I got here. Let me get them tight together. Okay, here they are. See that spacing is all even, no huge gaps, nothing really tight, just all even. If there's little variations, that's okay, but only little variations, ones that you could hardly notice are fine. Because this Clapton is going to move as I go. Seven thirty-eight. Okay, now my next step is to get these cores ready to go into my drill and then actually get them into my drill. So, I have this 90 here on this one, and I'm just gonna clean it up a bit, but I am gonna leave it a 90. I'm just gonna get anything hanging off, off of it and leave it a 90. And then I'm gonna make these other two also 90s. Also, in the middle one, I'm going to cut off the old loop. I'm going to grab this end, and this is going to end up being a new loop. So I put a little hook in it for now. Now, I'm going to take these three pieces at the 90. I'm going to grab them all by the 90 and get them into my left hand and then grab my drill. Open up my drill and each of these 90s are going to find their own little slot here. Just like if we were doing a three core alien. And then I'm going to close my drill and all three wires are coming out. Now I just want to look at my wires like this. I want to make sure the middle one's in the middle. Make sure the middle one's in the middle all the way down here and crimp the wires accordingly. Now, I missed a couple things in the tools. All right. I missed nylon pliers. And I missed something to hold cores together that's easily to take off. So, what I'm going to use is one of these hair clips. But you could use a clothes pin, a small one or a big one. Anything you'd normally use to keep cores together that's not going to damage the wire. I'm going to use this. I like using this the best. We're going to need it for a short amount of time, but it's really going to help. I suppose if you wanted to, you could use a scrap piece of wire. Okay, let's get this attached to the swivel. Okay, so now I got my swivel here. 
And I'm going to take that middle core, the one that's longer than the other two, that has some naked wire on it. I'm going to hook it onto the swivel. Grab it with my needle noses and twist the swivel about five times. Now, Now the success of this build comes because only the middle core is attached and these two wires have nothing holding them so that clapton can move. So I want no binders up this wire, but until I get halfway done, I am going to clip the end of this with my hair clip. So I'm going to make sure that the cores are in the proper place, the middle wires in the middle, the left and the right that are coming out of the drill are left and the right down here so there's no twists. I'm going to take these wires, put them together, and clip this hair clip. You could push them together, they don't necessarily have to be, but I'll get that one a little closer. And like I said, I can't stress it enough, I want no other binders in the rest of this. I need that Clapton to move where it needs to move. I need to get that fusing in there and just let the Clapton do what it's got to do to make this a successful three chord stagger fuse Clapton. And you'll see what the result is when I'm done. Okay, back down here at the drill chunk. Obviously you could see the middle wire and you could see the wire that I started on when I was spacing and all that good stuff. So the first part I fuse is obviously not going to be clean because from here back it's just a mess because of all that that's going on. But that's okay. I need this beginning part to get this build flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my 38 gauge and I'm just going to find an opening. And I'm going to take the 38 and stick it between any two of the wires. It does not matter. Put my drill in the forward because that's how I did my fuse, my initial Clapton's. And I'm going to start the twist. And I'm going to crimp a little bit. And I'm going to do this and get this build nice and flat in the beginning. Obviously it's not going to be pretty until I get past this mess. But I never cut that off because I need to do this in the beginning. Now we're starting to fall into the gaps. What you're really focusing on is the two outside rungs. The middle will fall where it may. Don't worry about the middle. Worry, worry about hitting the edge every time. up you got to reverse and go back and fix it but it's very important 
that every five to ten you crimp it and if you see this starting to get out of control starting a triangle crimp it right away don't let it go too far the further you make it go the harder it's going to get back in place so get it right away if you have to back up to get it do it but you'll see I'm only going to do about five to ten full rotations and then I could see there, there's a triangle motion that's starting to happen you see the middle is kind of sticking up a little bit more, just slightly. But I want to get it now. I don't want it to get out of control. Okay, I'm going to go close up in a second, but before I do, these wires begin to be twisted, and that's very normal. What I want to do is I want to untwist them for a couple reasons. First, the cores are going to start messing up. Second, the claptons are going to start grabbing if they're twisted, and they're not going to move. So, this is why it's important to have something that's quickly able to be taken off. I'm going to untwist my wires and carefully line them back up. And clamp them back again but once I get halfway down this I actually take this clamp off and leave it off So it's the same straight angle all the way down. If you're zigzagging, there's an issue and it's probably spacing. Just about this entire build, if you have an issue, it's probably with your spacing. Um, the twisting is no big deal. You see that my wire's twisted here. We're going to get that out later. That happens a lot with this build. halfway down this wire so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off make sure nothing's twisted and I'm just going to go and just make sure you don't get your face too close but usually you're not going too fast at this part but this actually makes the build very easy to do when these are loosened up as long as you got nylon pliers or something Keep the wire true and flat, you'll be okay.
I notice the further I get down, the closer to the end, I have to put a little bit more pressure on the fusing wire. Okay, so I'm at the end here. I'm not too worried about what it's looking like. Sometimes you'll see at the end of these two wires, you'll see the clap and started to come off of the core. And that's normal. That's because the fuse was pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and eventually it pops off the core a little bit. So now I'm going to clip my 38. I'm going to clip my wire. I'm going to grab my needle noses. I'm going to hold tight and I'm going to get these twists out. I'm going to pull away from the drill and put my drill in reverse. Majority of the twists on this side are out. I still got these three. So now I'm going to clip it from the drill. Flip it over. Insert it into the drill. Grab it where the twists end. twists end, I'm pulling tension away from the drill, untwisting, I'm going to move down to this twist, untwist, and now I got slight twists in it that I can do either by hand 
or with two pairs of pliers. But 2738, it's not hard to twist it with your hand. I'm going to show you what this bar looks like close up, and then we'll wrap some coins and see what they are up to. So here's what it's looking like. Three core 27 gauge and 38. Very cool looking wire. Okay, so now I'm going to take this wire, get the measurement, and cut it in half. So, I got a little less than 7 inches, so a little less than 3.5. I can cut it. And I'll have my two pieces. Now, these aren't necessarily the hardest things to wrap. They're just three round cores. So I have a three millimeter bit here and my needle noses. I'm just going to grab it with my needle noses. pull too much because you can pull them claptons right off. So make sure when you pinch it, you pinch hard and you're not going to just slide that clapton off the cores. And I'm going to do dual coil, five wraps around this three millimeter. Okay, here's what they look like all wrapped up. Alright, let's get these things installed real quick in the drop.
see what they owe me out to. seems a little low. These usually start out at about a 0.1 and end up at a 0.12 to 0.13 after all the hot spots are out. I actually just did this build in the last live video and I have them installed in my Bonza. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep this build and I'm going to clean it and color it and take some pictures and attach it to the video. But we will go to FaceTime and talk about this build a little bit more and wrap up this video. But it is sitting at a 09 to start off. So cloud production, 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 cloud production is great on these coils. The flavor, right on point. It's just simply one of the best coils. Anytime you have a three-core coil that's like 26 gauge, it's going to be a lot like your Alien. Now, the thing with these are it does accept juice. It wicks very well. What people love about these coils is they're awesome for cleaning off. They last forever, especially using 36 gauge. They're going to last a real long time. So like I said, I put these in on the previous video, in a live video. I actually installed these, did the ohms, they came out to a .12. I put them in the Bonza, I got the Bonza a little more than halfway open. It's on a Tesla 2 thirds, which is a series box. I have it turned up slightly. Um, I'm dripping some Blueberry Delight. And the flavor is just amazing on the coils and the Bonza. Um, perfect combo really. This builds great for a regulated device, especially if you get it up to that .12, that's why I use 27 gauge, because this same build with 26 gauge, you're going to be sitting at like a .09 to a .1. Just great cloud production. Um, and the flavor is just, like I said, on point. Now, this build is, I would say, I wouldn't call it a beginner build. You definitely have to be a little bit more advanced to be doing this build. But it's definitely one of them builds that you want to do right after you do all your beginning coils. Um, after that, you could just start adding cores and adding cores. Like I said in the beginning of the video, people have got up to about 18 different cores. When you jump up in cores, just jump down in gauges. Like when you hit 5 cores, start going to 28 gauge. When you hit 6, 7, 8 cores, go to 30. And then above that, you got to go like 32 gauge for the cores. And even some people do 34 gauge for the cores when you're going even higher. Um, you also might want to drop down the Clapton size to 40 gauge and 42 gauge. But my ideal three core stagger fuse Clapton are the ones that I sell. And they are 26 gauge Nichrome and 36 gauge Nichrome. Those are my favorites. These ones are very good for a regulated box. It just gets you to that regulated, that regulated ohm that I like. And that's 0.12 to where you could bump it up to 130 and you got an awesome vape. And I think I covered everything in this video that I wanted to cover, so we're done. Let me go edit this video, get it up as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget that all my tutorials, to go look at all the pre-recorded tutorials instead of the live, if you want a shorter video that's better quality, go to the playlists, look under build tutorials or beginner coils, beginner tutorials, and just starting off videos. 
I usually put live in all my live videos in the title. I always put live or build and chill or Saturday Night Live, SNL, something like that. But pre-recorded are always marked and you can always check my playlists. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to make sure you know when I go on live and when my videos come on. Go check me out on Instagram. Go check out Hometown Hero E-Liquid. And just have a good day. I'm Nick Devine. Peace out. Don't forget to check out Coil Wars for sure. Coil Wars video is coming very soon. Might be the next video. Thanks for your support. And have a good one. Peace out.